What's up YouTube? So today we're going to talk about the stress, the beauty, and the basic things you need to know when it comes to printing halftone. And I try to make this video very educational because I know the struggle when you're a beginner or when you don't have anybody to help you out. So make sure to drop a small like because it lets me know that you like this type of content. So now, let's go to work. But before we start, what are halftones? Halftones are little tiny dots that give you the illusion of an image. It could be a full color design, small effects, little shadows. They could also give you different types of shades and colors and so many more awesome stuff. For example, this video that you're watching right now is created by a bunch of different pixels that the human eye can't detect unless you zoom in. And it's almost the same thing when it comes to halftones. It's just a bunch of dots that combine and blend together to give you that illusion of an image that you can't really see from far unless you get real close. And don't think that I'm an expert. I still have a lot to learn and a lot to grow. And I honestly still consider myself a rookie. But I fell in love with this craft. And the little things that I know, I love sharing them. So now, let's get to work. All right, we're gonna start with the artwork. And this is the design my customer sent me. As you can see, it has a bunch of different gradients and shades. Now my goal is to convert this whole design into a one color print. I'm not a graphic designer and if I try to do this all by myself, it's gonna be a huge headache and I'm probably gonna take forever. So I have to hire a professional. It's a graphic designer that I've been working with the last three years and he has years of experience, not just with graphic designing, but also with screen printing. So whenever I send him a high detail design, he already knows what to do. And this is how you communicate with your graphic designer. First, I send him the design and I let him know that I wanted to convert this image into a single color print. Second, I let him know that the design was going to go on the back of a black hoodie just so he can use the background of the black hoodie and implement it into the design. And third, third, I let him know that the design was going to be white so I needed an underbase and my bright white to be separate because I was going to make two different screens. And fourth, you send him the size of the design that you want so he can send you exactly what you're looking for. And this is what he sent me. I received a PDF file where he had already separated the underbase with the bright white. It had the registration marks and everything, just ready to print. Now, to get it, convert everything into halftones, you're gonna need a RIP software. The RIP software that I use is called PrintFab. What's a RIP software? It's a software that helps you convert all your gradients and shadows into halftones, just by a click of a button. Now, is it necessary for screen printing? The answer is yes. But I'm gonna be very honest with you. If you're only printing for yourself, and if you're only printing simple designs, then I wouldn't recommend to get it until you start picking up higher detail designs. But if you are picking up higher detail designs, then I will recommend to get it. Especially if you're printing for customers, because you wanna provide the best quality. And having a RIP software is gonna give you the best results, hands down. And I'm just touching the surface with this topic. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do another video that goes more into depth with the RIP software. But just in case you're wondering, the software that I'm using to uh, create my graphic designer is CorelDRAW. And the printer that I'm gonna use to print my transparency films is an Epson 1430. Not too much talking. Let's put that uh, RIP software to work. Hey, good morning, good morning. Now these are the two films, the underbase and the bright white. And this is why I love the RIP software, because look at all the details. Look at how it gets everything nice and opaque, nice and correct, you know? It breaks all the half tones into, into nice little uh, shadows. Like you can see the gradients here go down. And this is the underbase. Now let's go print the screens.
And I almost forgot to tell you the OPI and angles that I'm using for this project. OPI stands for lines per inch. The higher the OPI, the smaller the half tone. The lower the OPI, the bigger the half tone. And there's a small formula that you could use to pick the correct screens for the right project. For example, the design that we're going to be printing today has an OPI of 46. If I want to find out what's the correct screens to use for this type of design, I'll go to my calculator and I'll type 46 times 4.5 and it's going to give me 207. So that's a minimum mesh that I need for this project. Now I don't have a 207 mesh, but I do have a 230. And the angle that I use is 26. And I'll be very honest, I rarely touch the angle. But what I have heard is that you want to stay between 22 and 26 when it comes to the angles. But I might be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not an expert, and I still have a lot to learn. And I still want to learn. So if you know, please let me know in the comments. But I'm sharing it because this it has been working for me. Okay, it's time to register our screens. And it's very simple. I'll grab my film, I'll tape it to my platen, then all my screens get aligned to the registration marks on the film. And I'll recommend to check out a video that I'm going to link in one of these corners. I explain this whole process a lot better because I break everything down into steps. Now, let's get to work. Okay, now we're ready to start testing, but before we start, I want to give you three small tips. First, make sure to prep your ink nice and well, so it can be nice and soft and smooth on the press, because you know that we are printing through little tiny half tones. Second, make sure that your screens have pretty good tension, because it helps you keep a nice consistent print. And third, make sure that your squeegee is nice and sharp, so you won't be adding extra pressure on the print. Since you know we are printing through little tiny half tone. Alright, so we're ready to start printing and we're going to do our first test print. We're going to start with the underbrace. So let me bring you guys closer right here. Let me see right here. That good? Yeah, that's pretty good. Alright, this is the underbrace. We're going to give it three passes. Let's see how it looks. All right, not too bad. All right, now we're gonna do the, the bright white. See how it looks? So the print didn't come out how I wanted to. It's missing a couple of details here and there, but this is part of the business. This is part of screen printing. This is part of printing half tone. So I gotta remake the screen, so I'll be back. All right, we're back on track. I had to remake like three different screens and I had to do a bunch of test runs, but I'm finally satisfied. All right, this is the first print that we did. And as you can see, we're missing a lot of detail here and also here. And over here looks kind of kind of funky. Now this is the second screen and we, we got the detail here, but we're still missing detail here and a little bit of here and we're good up here. And this is the final result. Look at all the detail that we got. Beautiful. Look at the wheel here. And we're back on track with this. And it looks nice and crispy. Now, let's start production. Pretty awesome, right? Now, 
when it comes to burning halftones, things could get a little complicated, especially if you don't have the right equipment. So I'm gonna give you three tips that could probably help your burning process improve. First, and this is something that I just learned yesterday from a graphic designer. If your designer on your transparency film is not dark enough, here's a small solution. Grab the design, copy it, paste it over the same design, and then print it. It's gonna make the design darker. Second, sometimes you gotta go a mesh up. And that's exactly what I did on this print. I went from a 230 mesh to a 280 mesh. And third, grab two transparency films of the same design and tape them together. It's gonna make the, the half tones darker whenever you're exposing. And I'm probably gonna make a full video on this topic, if you guys want it. So let me know in the comments because I feel like we could go more into depth with this process. And whoever stayed to the end of the video, here's the information to our graphic designer. I'll go check them out, go say what's up, let them know, let them know my Print sent you. And once again guys, thank you for the love and the support. Make sure to hit that like button, comment, subscribe, share. It motivates me to keep pushing content. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna post most of the prints, most of the designs that he has colored, uh, separated, and vectorized for us. He actually uh, did our own, own a Milo Prince logo. So shout out to him. Once again, guys, thank you so much for the love and support. Have a beautiful day and God bless you all.